Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I wanted to do a short video review of the HP Mini 5 102. Uh, this is a version of the laptop that has a touchscreen display, um, which is not available on the $399 option. Uh, you have to go in and configure this one. But it's an interesting display, um, and it's one of the few netbooks that actually has that sort of an option. So it uh, definitely makes it distinctive. But it's not the only thing that makes this netbook distinctive. Um, as you'll see, sort of looking around it, it's got an uh, unusual sort of boxy angular shape. This is more of a business-oriented netbook aimed for businesses and education purposes. Um, as such, it has a completely metal frame. It's a magnesium alloy and aluminum and a much sturdier feeling than most plastic, cheap plastic netbooks that you get. Um, and that's one of the reasons why this netbook actually starts at $400, whereas a lot of competitors you can pick up for as little as $300. Um, in addition to the uh, metal display, or a metal case, it also has a 7200 RPM hard drive, which is a little bit faster than you usually get. It's got an accelerometer, which um, in the event of a fall will actually detect that it's falling and shut off the hard drive to prevent damage. Um, it's got uh, HP DuraKey finish, which helps prolong the uh, life of the keyboard, and um, a couple of other features that are a little premium. For example, the battery, you can see this down here, has a gauge that'll show you how much juice is in the battery just by pressing it. So, um, you know, a cu couple of things that really set it apart. Um, the keyboard and touchpad are pretty nice. Uh, you've got an isolation or chiclet style keyboard here with some space between the keys. I find typing on it is pretty comfortable. Uh, the door key finish is not something that you really notice. The keys feel um, almost rubbery, but it's really, you know, these are more of a plastic feel to them. But they do feel pretty durable, and typing is, is pretty uh, pretty good experience typing. I managed to get around 100 words a minute typing on this, which is about as fast as I can type on any computer uh, with a full-size keyboard or this one, which is a little bit smaller than full-size. Um, the touchpad is interesting in that it has two distinct buttons for left and right clicks. That's something you don't see on a lot of uh, uh, netbooks anymore. A lot of them have sort of a single button, which I think it's easier to make a single button look good. Um, but this one's, you know, reasonably attractive, and it's nice knowing uh, by feel whether you're on the proper side to make a left click or a right click. There's a little scroll section on the right side of the touchpad. It does not support multi-touch gestures the way that many touchpads do these days. Um, I find it's a little bit awkward to use, especially because the scroll section is near the edge here, and the touchpad is sort of indented a little bit. So in order to scroll, you sort of wind up with your finger a little bit on the uh, the chassis and not on the touchpad, um, unless you do it just right. And, you know, that's something you can definitely get used to it. It has almost a glassy texture. Um, doesn't provide as much friction as a more plastic touchpad would or, a, or even a metal one. Uh, if they make them out of metal, I'm not really sure. So, you know, I'd, I'd prefer a little bit more of a textured plastic here. Uh, this is more of a glassy, uh, it could still be plastic, but it's more of a glossy, glassy kind of feel to it. Uh, it's not perfect, but it works. Um, above the touch, above the keyboard here, you've got a uh, power button which glows and two shortcut buttons for the browser and uh, email applications. Um, one thing that's interesting here is that the function keys, instead of hitting F, uh, the function button, and the key in order to uh, do things like make the brightness go up and down, by default they serve as the function that are on them. So uh, you've got your uh, brightness, sleep, lock, uh, volume, and mute buttons. When you press them, that's what happens. If you want to actually do an F5 or an F11, you have to hit function plus F5 or F11. Um, now let's take a quick look at the touch screen. This is something that I have sort of commented on in another video, which you can uh, check out on YouTube. But um, I just wanted to point out that this is running Windows 7 Home Premium. The laptop's also available with Windows 7 Starter Edition. Um, but Windows 7 Home Premium really does take better advantage of the touch screen features. For example, um, you know, in addition to having these large icons here, you can get to jump lists by dragging. There's uh, support for multi-touch gestures and support for things like tap and hold to simulate a right click. And as you tap, you can see this little button pops up and um, sort of shows you where you are. And there's a little sort of pointer 
Um, the problem with a capacitive touchscreen like this, and it does support multi-touch gestures, is that your finger is actually going to be over the section that you're trying to tap on. And so that little uh, pointer helps you figure out where you're going. Um, the longer you use this, the, the better you get at being pretty precise, I find. Um, now, one thing that I noticed is that when you're in things such as uh, web pages, let's uh, go to So when you've got a, a web page open up here that um, in the Google Chrome browser, which I'm using right now, you can't just do sort of the iPhone style tap and drag um, on the screen. It just doesn't work. Um, instead, you need to come on. Instead, you need to use the scroll bar, which you can tap. But if you use Internet Explorer, which is designed to work with Windows 7 Home Premium properly, this might take a second to load, you should be able to get that to work. Uh, the web page might not be loaded fully yet. There we go. So it works just fine in Internet Explorer out of the box. It doesn't work in Google Chrome. Uh, it doesn't work in Firefox unless you install an extension like the, um, um, I forget what it's called. There's a, a click and drag extension for Firefox, which should emulate this sort of behavior. Um, it's a multi-touch screen, which means that you should be able to also um, open certain images and zoom using two fingers. Um, and I'll show you that if we open Paint, you can draw with two fingers at a time. Now, one thing that you can't do with this sort of touch screen because it doesn't have palm rejection technology is place your palm on the screen and write because as you do that, your palm's going to confuse it and you're going to get a lot of extra lines. Um, that's not really a problem on this particular netbook because the screen doesn't swivel down. Uh, you can't fold it over the keyboard and use it in tablet mode. Um, really, the, the action is more of a type, reach up to the screen, poke at the screen kind of action. And honestly, I'm not sure why anybody would spend a lot of time doing that when it's more precise, even with the Windows 7 optimizations, it's just more precise to use the touchpad and it's faster to reach your hands down to the touchpad, which is right here on the same plane, than to reach up. So, you know, I'm, I'm not really certain why you would want to have a touchscreen like this on a netbook um, that doesn't work in tablet mode. I can see how if you did have a tablet like the uh, Asus um, uh, EPC T101MT, which is coming out this week, you'd want to be able to have Windows 7 Home Premium, uh, which has some of these extra features like the tap and right-click. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm just not that impressed, I guess, with the touchscreen on a netbook like this, um, which is only usable in clamshell mode. Overall, though, you know, I really like the, um, the laptop. You know, it's got a nice professional look to it. Um, it's not really that heavy compared to a lot of other netbooks. Um, the uh, six cell battery lasts for a relatively long time. I, uh, uh, you can go to my website to see the complete battery results. I believe it was around six hours or so. Um, you've got a uh, SD card slot, microphone and headphone, ethernet, USB, a lock port, uh, dedicated uh, switch for toggling the wireless on and off, uh, batter, or, uh, hard drive indicator, two more USB ports for a total of three, VGA and power. And um, one feature that's really kind of neat here that uh, was also the case on the HP Mini 5 101 is that it's incredibly easy to not only pop out the battery just by pulling those, pulling those two uh, things together, but the camera is now falling apart. You push them again, and the RAM access panel comes open. So it's very easy to upgrade the RAM. This will support up to two gigabytes of RAM. So, you know, overall, I think the HP Mini 5 One or Two is a winner. Uh, the touchscreen option, I'm not entirely sure why you would want it, uh, but it's nice that it is there. Other options include a high quality uh, uh, solid state disk, 
um, Windows 7 Home Premium, Windows 7 Professional, or Windows 7 Starter, or SUSE Linux. Um, so you get a lot more options with this netbook than you do with many others, and options are always great. Um, is it worth spending $100 more than some other netbooks just to get the starting unit at $399? Depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for durability and a nice finish, um, that faster hard drive, yeah, I mean, you do get what you pay for. Um, do you absolutely need those things? That depends on you. You're going to have to make that decision. Um, the touchscreen is something that you're going to have to really <laughs> decide you need before I think it uh, probably makes sense to shell out the extra money for. But again, nice to have the option. This is Brad Linder for Lilliputin, and this is a video review of the HP Mini 5102. Visit lilliputin.com for more details, photographs, and uh, text review of the same laptop.